Hello so fellow survivors and once again welcome to another mo mod tutorial for, by me, Friar Knight. Today I'm actually going to be covering how to install the different settings for mods, especially on servers and for single player. This is going to be using the new capitalist mods, the research table, and the advanced player table since I have yet to add those to my server or to my single player. So let's go ahead and get started with the single player first. Of course, you're going to want to go into your ah, your Steam account and you're going to want to go down to Browse for Workshop. And of course, you're going to want to go ahead and find the mod you're wanting. I follow the author of the mods already. And you can just easily go to any other pay, any of the mods you want and subscribe to the mod. And for the most part, that's all you ever need to do. But if you want to do special settings, such as removing certain engrams, or if you're wanting to set special prices, which on this table doesn't have that, but on other tables like the meat, sell, and buy table, you can change the prices on that. And that's what I'm going to be mainly showing you today. So first, I'm going to go ahead and install these mods onto my personal server. And I am going to have any delicate information censored out on this page so if you see anything blurry that's not rendering issues that's just security so keep that in mind so what I'm going to go ahead and do is go down to mod IDs which with this server host they automatically install the mods for you and you're going to want to find these mod ID this is very simple and a lot of people seem to miss this but if you go to the workshop page, on the very top you'll always see a, a URL code. If you highlight this part right here, just copy it. And for me, I just paste it here. And I have to insert a comma between each mod. That's how you install the mod through mod ID. Of course, some mod developers will put it in it. I forgot what the term is now. Great. FAQ, that's what it was. Like on this one, he has an FAQ leading to the main FAQ, which he keeps all the mod IDs right here. So you don't have to go digging through through to find them. And that one's the research table, so I'm going to just go ahead and grab the research table one, copy it, come back over here, comma, paste. And once again, that's all you ever need to do for adding the mods to your server. Now the next thing I'm going to go ahead and do is add in the... Sorry, my bearing just went blank for a moment there. Next thing I'm going to go ahead and do is change the settings on my personal server. So you'll notice right here there's a FTP details. Most likely you won't be seeing any of the specific information because this is sensitive information. But right here, you'll still see user and pass. The password you can change on your own down at the bottom where it says modify the password. But you'll want to copy your user and you'll want to go to an ex a um, program like Vilezilla, which is what I use. And you'll want to put it in, in that information in order to connect to that server. So this is what I'm going to do is copy my Oh wow, I cannot think today. You want to copy the IP host and put that here. And also put it in a port. You want to put in your username and your... Oh wait, you don't put the port in there. You port, put the port in over here. <laughs> Sorry. You want to put in your username and your password and then just connect to it. And also, if you're just doing this on your single player, you can easily do this by going to your library right clicking on the game going to down to properties local files browse local files and at this point it's the same thing as if you were doing it on filezilla you want to go to suitor games saved config windows no editor and the two main files we'll be looking at are these two I just highlighted, 
which is going to be game and game user settings, which I'm going to go ahead and get to on FileZilla here. Because the server will always overwrite the client side that config, so you don't, don't have to worry about setting it up uh, client-wise unless you want to have it where your players can test out things on their own, like on an independent single player, so they know the exact settings and can get a feel for it without having to join your server, yada yada blah. Alright, configs, windows... And the one I'm going to work on right now is the game.ini. This one is, and one second, I forgot I have to right click on this. View edit, and I use Notepad++ in order to do any file editing. You can use Notepad or any other word editing software, but I highly suggest Notepad++ because it's going to automatically set up everything for you. And to remove a ingram from your server, what you'll need to do is, I'm going to go over to, let's see, which one was it? The research table. Oh, wait, this is not the research table. That is the ingram table, or not the, that's the advanced player table. <laughs> one second. That was a goof of me. I want to go to the research table. Go down to here, where it is server, admin, commands, and settings. I want to find this code right here, disable ingrams in the game.ini. This is what you want to copy and paste into your settings. I normally recommend doing it at the last one, so you know exactly where it is. So copy paste. And now that engram for the research table has been removed from my server once I save this. And when I restart my server, it will automatically apply as long as I make sure these files are uploaded back to the server. And there we go. All right, the next thing I'm going to show you how to do real quick is just simply how to change the prices and everything. So you want to go to, instead of the game ini, you want to go to the game user settings dot ini. You want to go ahead and edit it. And no, I don't want to keep that in file anymore. You'll just want to, and this will, you will also have to add in manually. What you'll see here, after all this, you'll start... This should be the last thing you see right here on your blank setting, which is the script engine game session. And that's basically saying how many players you can have maximum on your server. Mine's defaulted to this because of the fact that I'm using a hosted server and they you have to pay for more slots. But you'll notice there's, there's going to be other mods down here where you can insert their personal settings. Right here is capitalism, and you'll automatically see that, say, by fiber, 100, by that, 60. This is where you can change and edit the, either the amount or the price of certain items. So I'm going to go down here, and let's say... Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so I just remembered that on the capitalism mod... For the props table, he has added two new things, so I will go ahead and show you what you need to do. So, I'm going to go back to his workshop, go to the props table. Once again, I'm going to go to the server commands. You'll notice he has the commands for spawning the items. Disabling the table, and right here is what you need. The adjust prices or disable items in the game user settings. So, these are the settings so far. The parts I need is right here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that. Come back to my file 
editor and just simply paste it. And now people are able to go ahead and buy these different things for the set amount of price. You don't need these in there, but if you want to change them, you do have to have them. Like right here, by the refreshment shrine is set to negative one. By setting it to negative one, it disables the item from being able to be bought or sold, depending on the table, within the game at whichever table it was supposed to be for. And like the by piggy bank, right now it costs 5 gold. If I wanted to, I can set it to 50 gold. Or I can set it to 1 gold. But of course I'm going to set it to the default and I'm actually going to go ahead and change this for my server so you can buy it. The refreshment, if, ah, the refreshment shrine and let's see what's his default. Which was... 50,000. I'm going to go ahead and say 50,000 because that I believe that is the maximum amount of money you can have anyways. So once you set up these, you want to go ahead and save the file. Go back to your file, back to FileZilla, fin finish editing and delete the local files if you don't want to mess with it anymore. And then once you have finished setting up all your settings, and once again you can do this over in your personals by doing the same thing to here, and it'll automatically apply, you just need to restart your game if you had it running in the first place. And just close out everything you don't need. And I was just stupided and clicked on the wrong thing, <laughs> sorry about that, give me one moment while I go back. And once you have set up everything, you'll just want to save settings and restart your game server. This does take a bit of time with my server because there is a lot of mods. And I'm just going to go ahead and skip through this because you don't really probably want to sit here and watch this just loading bar the whole time. So, and it's really simple to set up settings like this. There's not much to it. You just need to make sure that you are putting in the right codes for whatever you're going to enable or disable. And I will go ahead and say if you, on the disable engrams, you don't have to disable it. Let's say you want the player to be able to get a certain engram, and these can actually be set up for the vanilla engrams too, though I don't know the codes for them, so I wouldn't be able to say any examples. The, if you want to just change, let's say, the Ingram cost from 0, like it's displayed here, to 30. So you'll put 30 here, it'll, that'll make it cost 30 points, and you'd want to set Ingram hidden equal false. By having it equal false, that means that you... I'm sorry, my brain blinked out for a second again. By setting it to false, that means it will still show up in the Ingram list for learning. If it's set to true, like it is right now, it completely disables it, and meaning the player cannot learn it naturally, and would have to spawn it in. The level requirement is what you can set to make it so that you have to be a specific level in order to unlock said Ingram, and removing Ingram pre-request, pre -request, I cannot talk today, prerequisites, is things such as you need the slingshot in order to unlock the bow. By setting remove the prerequisites to true, that would mean you can make the bow without having to have the slingshot. So that is something to keep in mind if you want to do different settings for your server. But as far as how you can set up the different prices for this mod and how to be able to edit if you can enable or if players can be able to craft the tables themselves or if they cannot, what levels and ingram points they need, anything like that. I have just covered all that for you. As for the new tables, once I have get, gone in an area set up for it on my server and once I get a little bit more familiar with it myself, I will most likely be making a video covering that and along with all the new props that the prod table has added such as the refreshment shrine 
and the different decorations that have been added. But until then, I do want to go ahead and thank you once again for watching my videos. Please leave a like and favorite if you enjoyed the video or if you found this helpful. Also, comments are very much welcome. Go ahead and show this to your friends, of course. You can also join my server, which you can easily do by 